and being rejected is something that we find very frightening. And so we busy ourselves with doing other things like, oh, maybe I should join these Facebook groups and try to network. Now, those things are important, but they're not the 20% activities. They're not what's going to propel your business forward. Hey there, I'm Goli Kalkaran, and this is Lessons from a Quitter, where we believe that it's never too late to start over. No matter how much time or money you've spent getting to where you are, if ultimately you are not happy, then it's time to get out. If you're feeling stuck and you feel like there's got to be more, there's got to be a way to feel fulfilled and excited about what you do, then this is the podcast for you. Each week, I will sit down with an inspiring guest who quit their professional career in order to forge their own path and create a life that they love. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Lessons from a Quitter. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas holiday or holiday season, whatever you celebrate. And it is the last day of 2019. Tomorrow is the new year. I honestly can't believe it. We're going into a new decade. I know there's tons and tons of like messages being thrown at you about the new year and the new decade and getting all your goals set. So I wanted to do an episode about goal setting today. I uh, know how important it is. And I did a webinar mm, maybe six months ago that people really liked. So I figured I'd turn it into a podcast episode. I will caveat this that I think goals, as we'll talk about, are massively important. But what I've talked about a little bit on the podcast and on social media a lot is that a lot of times we think that we just need the goals. We think we need the tactics. And what we're actually missing is the foundation, which is the mindset around all this stuff. And the reason we fail in our goals is because all of the thoughts come in, right? I always give the example of like weight loss because it's an easy one to understand. Weight loss is not like a mystery, right? There's like a very simple equation of taking less calories than you burn. And Yet we all kind of go after these tactics and strategy and we want to find the newest diet or the new workout. You know, we go down this like shame spiral when it doesn't work out for us or we give up and we don't really look at like why we're giving up. And a lot of that is just all of the emotional issues that we have surrounding food and working out. So you just start going down the spiral. This will never work. I'm not going to stick to this. I'm too lazy. Uh, I'll die if I don't eat chocolate, whatever it is. And so you got to deal with those thoughts before you ever like start an exercise regimen. And so I just say that as a caveat before we jump into goal setting, because I don't think that the answer is to just set more goals. Cause then, you know, I know that that's why like new year's resolutions have such a bad rap is because people put these like audacious and ill-advised goals. And then within a week they drop it and then they feel horrible about themselves. And so I don't want you going down that rabbit hole. I want you to figure out whatever it is, whatever blocks you're having based on the goals that you're trying to set, like deal with that that's the real work. Like that is the deep work. But once you have that, then you need strategy and you need goal setting and you need action steps. So being the new year, I think it's the perfect time to jump in. Before we do that, a couple of things that I want to know about the new year with the podcast. I want to start experimenting with some other types of formats. I know we do tons of interviews and don't worry, we're going to keep doing interviews, but I do want to try some other things. I'm thinking in 2020, I really want you guys to take more action and not just listen to inspirational stories. I want to figure out like how I can help you get out of this rut or this place where you feel stuck. And one way uh, in episode 69, Julian Mathers, uh, I love that he said that he went to Footpath University, which was like putting in his earphones and going for a walk every day and listening to podcasts or audiobooks. And so I want to just take a lot more action. I feel like the biggest way to like work on mindset stuff is really through just forcing yourself to listen to it every day or read it and have that be the type of information you're taking in besides all of the negative information that we get bombarded with. And so I was thinking that maybe one thing we could do is focus on one book every month and I could do an episode at the end of the month, kind of like a book club type thing, but based on books that are going to help you kind of quit your job. And so for January, I want to start with The 4-Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. It is a classic in this field. And it was the book that really opened my eyes. It really changed my life. And I actually haven't read it since I read it back in 2014. And I'd love to like revisit it. 
And I would love to hear your thoughts on it. So if you want to follow along, if you want that episode to make sense, then I would suggest reading the four hour work week this month and taking, you know, 10, 15 minutes a day to read some of it. And we will chat about it at the end of the month. I don't know exactly if when that episode's going to come out, but I will let you guys know. So that's what we're going to do. If you want a different type of episode, if you want us to like do, you know, I don't know, specific things where it's like actionable steps or more experts or whatever, please let me know. Uh, I'm very open to making this podcast something that is going to be the most helpful. And while I love doing the interviews and putting inspirational stories, I really want this to be as helpful as possible. So let me know. Um, and yeah, let's jump in to goal setting for the new year. We've already gone over the fact that like it is very important. And I know that sometimes we roll our eyes with New Year's resolutions or with goals. And it's sort of laughable because the problem isn't goals. The problem is that, like I said, either you don't have the foundation or you're setting the wrong types of goals and we'll go over that. So I want to just spend some time talking about like how you should properly be goal setting for everything in your life, whether it's to start a side hustle or to explore your passions and find a new career, or if it's, you know, working on your health or your relationships or spending some more time taking care of yourself, whatever it is, um, we need goals because when you don't have specific action steps, what happens is you become overwhelmed very easily because you're thinking about everything that you have to do. And what happens when we get overwhelmed is that we bury our head in the sand and we don't do anything. And that is why so many people are stuck for year after year after year in a career that they know they hate. It's just that they don't know what the next step is. And it's like overwhelming to think about how to get to point Z. And so it's like, I give up. I'm not going to do anything. And so if you really want to take stock of your life and figure out how do you create that life that you want, one of the biggest ways is to figure out how to properly set goals so that you can consistently work on your dreams. And so I do think it's very important. I want to go over some principles of goal setting before we actually get into like how you should be setting your goals. One thing that I want you to understand if you take like nothing else away from this podcast uh, is the compound effect. Now, Darren Hardy has a book by the same name, The Compound Effect, that is incredible. In fact, it'll probably be one of the books that we read this year but you should read it 100%. And it is the idea that small steps consistently over time will make a radical difference in your life. Now, I think we all rationally understand this, but when it comes to our goals, we want things so fast. We want it to happen now. We don't have patience for like future us, for waiting for like the next year or the next five years. We want it to happen the next month. And so we create these huge steps. Like we think we have to overturn our whole life. And that's just never how it works. Now, I'm going to stick with like the weight loss analogy throughout this because it's just really easier to understand. Um, I'll work in obviously some goal setting stuff around career, but just as a way of understanding. So we all know with weight loss that like yo-yo dieting doesn't work. Like nobody has to tell you that losing 10 pounds in a month is a bad idea because you're just going to gain it back again, right? Yet we all consistently keep doing it because for some reason we can't see ourselves in two years and think like, okay, if I just walk 15 minutes a day and yeah, I'm not going to see a huge difference in the first year, but by year three, it's going to be an insane difference in how I feel, the endorphins I get, how I've been like thinking, maybe the things I listen to on my walk, uh, the weight I've lost, I start eating healthier. Like it has this ripple effect. I think while we rationally know it, we never set our goals up this way. And so I want you to understand this, that like this is really the secret in everything. And this is what I try to tell people about finding a career that they love is that you don't have to like burn the bridges and leave everything and try to find this dream career in the next three months. Like that's overwhelming. And I know a lot of times like it's sort of counterintuitive because we are so unhappy in the state that we're in that we just, the idea of staying in that job for another two years seems unbearable. But what happens is we get so overwhelmed that we don't start working on anything. So then the years go by and we're still stuck there, right? So it's like, I understand that it's going to be hard to deal with the stress, let's say for another year or five years, but it's better than dealing with it for 30, right? Like having 
a plan of attack and attacking it consistently is the only way for you to be able to really make a difference that is going to last and that is not going to be overly um, chaotic in your life and cause a lot of like pain because you kind of uprooted everything and didn't think things through. So I really want you to like realize that the compound effect is the biggest lesson you can take is just start small and just keep going consistently. And we're going to talk about how you can set goals and you can work on your side hustle or your dream job or figuring out what your dream job is with just like three hours a week. That's it. Like find an hour here and there on a lunch break, an early morning, one late night, whatever it is, it will make a radical difference in a year. If you work three hours a week for 52 weeks, that's 156 hours in a year, which divided by a 40-hour work week is 3.9, but we'll just round it up to four. It's basically four full work weeks of working on your dreams. And I think we just don't ever think of it like that. Like when we're sitting at home after work and we don't know what to do, like thinking about working one hour on our website doesn't seem like that big of a deal. And it's like, oh, I'd just rather watch Netflix. But once you have a plan and you realize like, okay, I only, I need to consistently put in these three hours and that will make the difference in my life. You start seeing change. It may not be in the next month. It might be in the next six months or one year, but I'm telling you 2020 is going to come and go. So make sure that like you're doing even small, consistent steps so that at the end of 2020, you see a massive difference than you did in January. Not like taking steps so that in January, everything is different. So that's the first principle. The second one, a lot of people call it the 80-20 rule, but it's the Pareto principle. And it is really with everything that like 20% of input, whether that's your time, money, resources, really results in 80% of the output, results, rewards, things. That, and so like they use this a lot in like marketing and sales because usually if you track your customers, 20% of your customers will be the ones that are responsible for 80% of your sales. And yet we tend to all focus on the 80% of customers that only result in 20% of the sales because they look like a bigger cohort, right? And so you want to try to get to as many customers. But the smart thing to do is to focus on the 20% of customers that are giving you your biggest chunk of sales and make sure they're happy and make sure they're getting what they need because they're the ones that are like keeping your business afloat. It's the same thing with time. I think we are all so used to doing, you know, like the year passes and you've been doing every single day, you know, like overly doing and stressed out and busy. And yet you feel like I've been running on this treadmill and nothing has happened. Like I don't actually feel like I got anywhere, right? And because we keep ourselves so busy with so many to-dos and so many little things, and if you allow for the time, like it will get filled up with those things. And so what you have to do is figure out like what are the 20% activities that are going to move you forward 80%? And what are the 80% activities that are only like accounting for 20% of your progress? And so it really takes an honest look of like, for instance, in a business, let's say you want to start a side hustle. You know, we often get so caught up on little things of like making the perfect logo or, you know, making the website perfect. That's not why you're going to be successful. And so it really requires because like we don't want to do the hard work, which is like reaching out to customers and trying to sell our product or seeing if we can validate it in the market because that is scary. And talking to people and being rejected is something that we find very frightening. And so we busy ourselves with doing other things like, oh, maybe I should join these Facebook groups and try to network. Now, those things are important, but they're not the 20% activities. They're not what's going to propel your business forward or your side hustle. And so I think it requires in all of these goals, regardless of what it is, like even in weight loss, you know, I think a lot of times we can get obsessed with doing all this stuff, even working out, you know, a lot of times like people put all this effort into working out. But if you don't actually like look at the 20%, which is what you're taking into your body and really focus on that, like all that working out is kind of not for nothing, but it's not going to have the effect that you want it to because you're eating a burger and fries at night. And so like that's just going to undo everything you did at the gym that day. And so it's just really kind of making sure that you know what you need to be scheduling in when you're scheduling your goals. So those are two of the principles that I think you need to know. Now, with goals, I think people all realize that they're, I think we maybe have all heard this by now. If you haven't, you can Google it for, you know, more info. But there are these things called SMART goals, which SMART is an acronym for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, 
relevant and timely goals. So when you're going through your goals, you need to go through each one of these letters and see if it fits within it. So SMART is specific. So that's the difference of, between saying, I want to lose weight next year and saying, I want to lose 10 pounds in six months. Okay, that's a much more specific goal so that you can create a plan to go after that. And the next one is, you know, in SMART is M, it's measurable. So you can measure that. You can see like, okay, do I know if I hit that goal in six months? Yes, I will, right? Attainable is another one. Like if you're saying I want to lose 10 pounds in 10 days, that's insane, right? But like if you say I want to lose 10 pounds in six months, that might be attainable depending on your body type. And so you have to find something that's realistic. I know we all don't like see our future selves and don't really want to work for that. But like the sooner you can understand that that's going to be your ticket to success, um, the better off you'll be. So the R in SMART stands for relevant. And that is for like, why do you want this goal? Or do you really want it? Because I think that so often we do these things that we think we should, especially like around New Year, everybody ha- like picks a health goal. And health goals are great if you actually want it. But if you're not actually committed to working out, like if that's a, something that you dread and it's not that important to you, like, yeah, maybe, you know, in an ideal world, you'd like to lose a couple pounds or get healthier and gain some muscle or whatever. But it's not like a huge burning desire in you. Guess what? You're not going to stick with that goal. So make sure whatever goal you're picking is something that you actually want that's like really relevant to you. And I think, again, like the more you can kind of get in tune with what it is that you want and make a realistic thing, the the more likely you're going to be successful. And the T in SMART is timely. So you have to make deadlines. You have to make a plan. It cannot be just like, I want to lose weight. It has to be within a specific time because that's how you can measure it. So again, to go back, it's specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. So when you're going through your goals, I want you to go back and go through each one of these and decide, like, does it fit within each letter? Okay, so now we have all the principles and we have the types of goals. So I want to talk to you about the best way to set goals. And they've done tons of studies on this. And the best types of goals are 90-day goals because a year is just too long. We're not going to remember or work towards it consistently. Now, you can set like an audacious year goal and then break it down into four quarters and do like, what are you going to focus on in Q1 of next year? Like by end of March, what do you want to have accomplished for your, let's say, health goal? So you pick 90-day goals. Now, I want to also say, I don't think that you should have any more than three goals. It's Honestly, our brains can't handle more than that. So pick three that you're going to focus on. That doesn't mean in Q2 that you can't pick three other ones. But for right now, think about like, what are the three things I'm going to focus on in the first three months of January? And then once you take that, then you can chunk it down into three one-month goals, right? So let's say if you're, we're going to go with the example of you want to find a new career. You don't know what you want to do and you know you're unhappy, but You don't know what kind of career you want to get into. So your goal, let's say, in 90 days is to get clear on, you know, the path that you want to take. Like you want to have a set path for your dream career. So let's say your three 90-day goals are, I want to have 10 informational like coffee dates or phone calls with people whose jobs I find interesting. I want to read three career transition or personal development books to like do the exercises and figure out more clarity. And I want to research and create an actionable list of five careers that I actually am interested in. So by the end of this 90 days, I want to have five careers that I can pursue. So those are very specific three goals, right? You have a date, you have a timeline of like the 90 days, you have specific numbers, like you want 10 phone calls or coffee dates, you want to read three books, and you want to have a list of five careers, okay? So what you can do is then take that and make them into three one-month goals. And then again, in each month, you're only going to set three goals for yourself. So you're going to say, okay, if I want to have 10 coffee dates in 90 days, then in each month I have to do three or four. Okay. So like month one, I'm just going to worry about reaching out to like getting three people on LinkedIn or three people, maybe friends of friends that I know or acquaintances or past people I work with or whoever you're going to contact. I only have to contact three people this month. 
and get them on a phone for 15 minutes to talk about their career. Or I have to go maybe to a networking event and talk to three people. I have to read one book this month. And like, I'm going to try to go to like a class or I'm going to try to go to a networking event or whatever for careers I'm interested in so that I can start making that list. Now that list of five, you know, that might be more towards the end of your 90 days. Like you may set all of those tasks in the last month because the first two months is what you're going to focus on the informational calls and the books so that you can get to that list. So then, you know, you would do five informational calls a month for the first two months so that in the last month you can really brainstorm what that list is. But do you see how like it's becoming easier? Like it becomes much more concrete as opposed to like, I'm going to figure out my dream career. What does that mean? Like, how are you going to look? Where do you find that? It's not like hidden under a rock. You have to take steps to actually get to that. So then once you start creating more actionable steps for yourself, it becomes much more doable. Like, you know what your marching orders are. Like, reach out to three people and find out what they do for a living. And then once you have that three-month goal, you can then chunk that down each month for weekly goals. So once you know that, like, your month one is to reach out to three people and to read one book and to go to, like, a networking event, let's say, then in week one, you can say, okay, I'm going to spend one hour just researching people to reach out to on LinkedIn. So I'm going to start making a list of all of the people that I find, like I'm going to research career titles and just start seeing what seems interesting to me. That's just one hour of your time, right? And that doesn't mean maybe then you're going to spend one hour reaching out to people. Or maybe you have, okay, I'm going to spend 20 minutes three times a week reading this book. So That's an hour of your time split up. And you're making progress on that book. You're making progress on reaching out to people. And maybe you schedule for that week, like you either research meetup groups or you go to a meetup group for an hour. You know, it's like, then it all, I can't explain like how easy this stuff becomes. It just becomes steps. Like, okay, this is what I have to do this week. I have to reach out to two people and I have to read a book. That's not that hard, right? So you do that every week. And again, I would say even for the weeks, you only have three goals. And like I said, like you could do it in three hours that week. Now, if you have more time and you can squeeze in more time, great. You'll get done faster. And maybe in some weeks you have to, you won't have, you'll have less time and that's okay. But here's the last part that I will say about goal setting is like, so now you have these goals. The most important thing is to Plan your weeks out so that you are making time to do these 20% activities, right? Because so often, like we, even if we have the goal, which a lot of times I think people don't get as granular as weekly, they'll get to like, unless they say like, okay, I want to work out three times a week. But let's say even that's your goal. What you need to do is every single week, honestly, it takes 10 minutes to sit down and plan your week. So you could do it on a Sunday night. You could do it on Monday morning. The first thing you do when you get to the office, you sit down and you look at your calendar. Or I do this honestly on a just a lined piece of paper every week. I don't do it in a calendar. Um, I need more space to write stuff. So what you can do is either first take like a brain dump and write down everything you have to do that week. So things that you have to do, things that you need to get, want to get to, um, the goals that you've set for that week, just anything that you can think of. Or if you already have that stuff kind of in a calendar, you can start figuring out how to calendar the rest of your week. So what I do is I take a line piece of paper and I just write like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with a little bit of space in between each. And then first you fill in everything that you have to do. So like literally meetings or appointments, things that can't be changed. And if like you're working, then you put your work hours. So you say like, you know, eight to five or eight to eight, whatever the time is that you're working, you put that time in for each day. And then you go in and you schedule in these 20%, like the three hours that you want to do, you schedule that in next. So let's say on a lunch break, instead of scrolling Facebook and Instagram, you put on Tuesday and your lunch break, you know, you're not going to have anything and you can take an hour. You're going to spend that hour researching LinkedIn for career uh, for people that you want to reach out to. Okay. So you schedule that into your calendar. It says Tuesday at 12 research LinkedIn for people to reach out to. Right. Then let's say like Wednesday at 9 PM, you know, that instead of going home and watching Netflix, because you don't know where to start and you're overwhelmed and you're exhausted, you have, okay, Wednesday at nine, I'm going to sit and I'm going to read. 
for 30 minutes, this book that I want to read. And then I'm going to, I don't know, research meetup groups for the other next 30 minutes. Then you, you schedule in those 20% goals. And then you go back and you schedule in all the other stuff that you have to get done because the 80% stuff will get done or you'll delegate it or it's not that important. Like you can either eliminate it or if you're keeping it, you can figure out like maybe on that list is like grocery shopping or shopping for your kid's birthday party. Maybe you can delegate that. Like you realize you're not going to get to it so you ask your spouse to do it or your friend to help you. Or maybe you realize, okay, it's worth me paying $15 to like get online delivery. So I'm just going to do that so I don't have to go to the grocery store and I have an hour to now sit down and work on this dream. And I'm telling you, the stuff gets done. But if you don't schedule in these goals, if you don't have, like even for working out, let's say, if you just have this like amorphous thing of like, I'm going to work out three days a week, we all know what happens. Like life catches up with you, things come up and then you just don't ever get to it. But if you have it on your calendar that like, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday after work at five to six, I have to go to the gym, you're much more likely to stick to it. And so I think that this is the most important. This has been like the most life-changing part for me is just scheduling in like for my business right now with this podcast. There are a million things that I can do every day. There's always stuff, whether it's social media and emails and recording a podcast episode and finding new guests and doing a blog post and whatever. And I was finding myself just like in a rut always doing something and never feeling like I got anything done or that I was growing it or I was growing my audience or I was reaching new people or that I was actually like serving good content. And then when I started scheduling this and it was like, okay, because I wasn't actually scheduling time to like write a blog post or record a new episode. And so I was getting caught up like posting on Instagram when like that doesn't make as much of a difference. And now when I schedule in like and I protect the time. So there's a lot of times now that I will protect like my Wednesday and Thursday mornings. I won't schedule any calls. I won't schedule any meetings. And like, obviously I have the privilege to be able to control that, but that gives me those mornings to work on the things that I need to work on. And you'll start seeing like, what times can you protect? Maybe it's a weekend, maybe like Saturday mornings, your spouse is going to take the kids and you're going to get three hours in the morning to work on whatever you need to work on. And so I think that that's kind of the lost part of goal setting. A lot of times like we set the goal, but then we don't actually have an action plan to work on it. And so if you're not working on it consistently, like I said, I mean, the compound effect, it's most likely not going to be successful. And I want you all to be very successful in all of the goals that you set for this new year. I hope this was helpful. If it was, let me know. Let me know if you want more tactics like this. Otherwise, I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful new year. And I hope the 2020 is filled with success and happiness and fulfillment and a career you love. And I will see you guys next week for another episode. Thank you so much for listening. I can't tell you how much it means to me. If you liked the podcast, please rate and review us on iTunes. It'll help other people find the show. If you want to connect or reach out, follow along on Instagram and Facebook at Lessons from a Quitter and on Twitter at Quitter Podcast. I would love to hear from you guys and I'll see you on the next episode.